Lots of people point to the anger that's fueling the rise of Donald Trump and, to a lesser extent, Bernie Sanders. And the media wonders, why is everyone so angry? Here, the answer is this. Because everything is shit. The economy sucks. Purchasing power has been dropping for decades, and it's not getting any better. Government is easy to blame, but what really powers an economy is business, large and small. And no matter who you talk to these days, it's pretty clear they think their company is run by a bunch of idiots. And they're right, because business has succumbed to the bigger idiot syndrome. Here, feel me. In the past, companies had leaders, people with vision and foresight and courage, who would have long reigns and would groom a successor. Not like that anymore. Here's how it works. And I'm going to be using guy as a generic term that includes both sexes, because in terms of workplace equality, I've seen women running businesses who are every bit as stupid as men, though they're likely being paid less than the stupid men to do it. Today, the people really in charge of companies are boards, and boards only want more and more profit. They're like those obese people whose brain doesn't have the trigger that tells them enough. All they care about is their next meal, which in financial terms is the next quarter. No vision, no long-term plans, immediate gratification. Corporate culture as a drive through Forget the rub and tug, they just want the tug. Needless to say, this leads to short-term thinking, because idiots. Living in three-month increments, CEOs don't have job security. Even if they want to enact a bold plan for long-term growth, they have to keep their job for that to happen, which means putting their focus on the next quarter, which means no long-term planning. This is what's known in technical terms as a clusterfuck. And this leads us to the next step in the equation. When CEOs had job security, they were expected to groom a successor, someone with the abilities to take over down the road. People with ability were identified and promoted. But with bosses now constantly looking over their shoulders, only an idiot would promote or hire people capable of taking over their job. So instead, they place people in subordinate jobs who aren't quite as smart or as talented as they are. And those people place others in subordinate jobs who aren't as smart or talented. And those people hire subordinates who aren't as smart and talented. And you go down the ladder, hiring people with less and less ability, eventually you hire morons. It's like inbreeding. The more you do it, the sooner you get banjo players. But it doesn't stop there. Because eventually the person at the top leaves or gets fired. So everyone gets bumped up one. And the bottom rung hires somebody who is even stupider than the guy who was previously the stupidest. And then that person climbs and someone even stupider gets in. Through upper level attrition, eventually the guy that was the biggest idiot at the bottom rises to the top. And the structure underneath them is progressively stupider. The bigger the corporation, the more layers of gradient stupidity. But wait, you'll say, there must be a rock bottom, a point at which the person who is at the bottom and stupidest has nobody who is stupider than them. Wrong. Stupidity is endless. And where do those people who were formerly at the top go when they leave? To other companies, because they have a good title and resume. Stupidity is a communicable corporate disease, and this is where we are today, with a layer of decision makers who make stupid decisions. Not simply wrong decisions, because even with wrong decisions, you can at least follow their train of thought, even if it's a train wreck. I'm talking about decisions so absent of reason that mere mortals cannot fathom. How can you tell if you're in a company with poor leadership? Well, here's one way. Metrics. They make every decision based on metrics. No common sense or vision, just data that winds up leading the leader instead of the other way around. Listen, data is a tool like a hammer. You don't ask a hammer to tell you where to put a nail. The other big giveaway that you're with a company that's under poor leadership? Committees. Committees are bullshit. The only good decision a committee has ever made is to adjourn. They say a camel is a horse designed by a committee, but that's not true, because a camel can still move forward. Now, I'm not talking about committees that are designed to study certain ideas and report their findings. No, I'm talking about groups that are empowered to make decisions that should be made by an individual leader. Committees are where ideas go to die. They function like the killers of Caesar, done by a group so that no one person can be held responsible for the killing. Because the way to sound smart on committees is to shit on everything. Because there is always a shitload of data telling you why something will fail. Just like the consensus of scientists who said manned flight was impossible. Apparently, the Wright brothers didn't listen to consensus. Not that there aren't some smart people on committees, but the IQ drops to the lowest common denominator. And smart people get no benefit, because we have to explain ourselves to idiots who have no ability to think higher than the level of a sack of potatoes. Smart people out there are nodding. After a while, you just give up and watch the shit show. 
Believe me, I did it at much music till I quit when the shit show went into reruns. Now I understand why people can't be brave these days. The system works to shut us down. If you show initiative, it makes everybody else look bad. In a circle jerk, nobody likes the person who stops jerking. And to paraphrase FDR, in this shitty economy, the only thing we have to fear is losing our job because there's no comfort to their other jobs out there. So we get an economy that doesn't innovate, discourages true talent, and seeks comfort in mediocrity. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why everything is shit. Thank you for listening.